Welcome to Lecture 12 of Biology 116 entitled Endocrine System 1. As we move forward in Biology 116, what we're now going to be looking at exclusively are the human body systems, my favorite part of all of biology. And in order to understand this, we have to first begin with a simple introduction to physiology. Now, many people have heard the term physiology before, and they usually hear it in association with anatomy, and that is, they usually hear it as A&P. A&P is simply going to stand for, of course, and this is not new to anybody, but it's important to understand the difference and the similarities between them. Anatomy and, of course, P stands for physiology. These are two critical components whenever you're studying any human system, any system, any system whether it's human or non-human. Now, anatomy is always going to be referring to form, whereas physiology is always going to be referring to function. And what we sort of simplify this idea of form and function by saying that form simply would just mean structure. And then if you look at this now in this new view of anatomy and physiology being the study of structure and function, we have said structure and function all the time and in many different ways. And I've always told you that they're intimately related to each other. Anatomy and physiology is no different. Though they're two separate entities, they both rely on each other when you're studying them. So it's important to make sure you understand that the structure of something, whatever it is, a cell, a tissue, an organ, will always be intimately related to the function of that whatever you're studying. And the same goes vice versa function in terms of structure. So as we move forward, what we're going to be now looking at is sort of the idea and the hierarchy that we see in systems physiology. And that is the idea that there's going to be a structural and a functional organization that we need to understand before we move into the actual specifics of any system. Again, this is basic introduction to physiology, things that you probably already know, but it's important to lay them out as a groundwork. Now, in terms of structure, what did I say? Structure always refers to anatomy. Form and structure basically is studying anatomy. And then functional organization would be physiological organization. What we mean by this is the following. It's the classic, you start off with the functional unit of life, right? The functional unit of life is a structure known as a cell, and cells are very important. Cells will combine together to give you, of course, tissues, right? And this is something we've seen many times over. Tissues are simply groups of cells. But what we want to specify about this grouping of cells is that the cells themselves, as functional units, this group together that we see is based off of similarities. Specifically, they are similar in form and also in function. That is, these cells are similar in their anatomy and in their physiology. So similar form and function of a group of cells will give you a tissue. When you combine these tissues together, you already probably know where we're getting with this, if you put together tissues, and these tissues have similar functions, when you put these tissues together, you of course end up with organs. And organs are a great point of study because this actually serves as a functional unit as well. Organs definitely function as a unit, as a whole unit. And they function as a unit, meaning that they're a smaller part of a larger system. System is what's coming up next, of course, because the organ is the unit for an organ system. So if you group together uh, a bunch of the organs, so if you have groups of organs together, let's say, when you have these together grouped in terms of this unit structure, you're then going to, of course, end up with organ systems. So what we've just done here is essentially the following. If we take cells, if we take tissues, if we take organs, and if we take an organ system, and we sort of lay them out and see their structural and functional organization all together, these things combine. They combine together to form what we commonly know as us, as an organism. And an organism is the embodiment of organ systems, which have the functional unit of organs, and organs which have the functional unit of tissues, and tissues which have the functional unit of cells. And therefore, we have created an organism via the important emergent property of biology. 
Remember, emergence in bio one, this was the idea that the whole is greater than the sum of its individual parts. As we get more and more complex, as we get more and more structurally and functionally complex, what do we get? We get greater structural and functional variation and higher forms of organization, etc. as we'll see in great detail when we study each of these systems as we move forward. Overall, speaking of these systems, let's take a look at table 40.1. It's a very expansive, very good table that shows us organ systems in many mammals, generally speaking. So this is our basic introduction to physiology. Pretty much all review, I think it's very important to remember that physiology and anatomy is an emergent study. When we're taking a look at a whole structure dissecting it to the individual parts and understanding that the whole has a greater sum than those individual parts. And now we'll begin with by looking at the endocrine system specifically.